Now the other day I had a question about a compressor that had some broken pistons and broken connecting rods. But let's first of all start off by looking at the compressor. We know that the compressor, regardless of what the compressor is, whether it is a hermetic or a semi-hermetic compressor, if it is a um, reciprocating compressor, then it's going to have to have suction valves and discharge valves like this. We're going to have the piston and that piston is going to have the motor that rotates and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to draw that here, but then here we're going to have oil. The oil is going to sit down here on the bottom like this, lubricate the bearings, the piston and so on. We have the cylinder right here and the refrigerant is going to be coming into the compressor through my suction line like this. Now, this refrigerant, this refrigerant as it comes in, is gonna come in and it's gonna come down here and it's gonna fill the crankcase of the compressor. It's gonna fill the crankcase. It's not gonna go directly, typically it doesn't go directly right into the uh, cylinder. The refrigerant is gonna come from, of course, out here, it's gonna come from the, let's say, the evaporator like this. So now we have the evaporator like this, and the evaporator is getting the refrigerant from the metering device. And that's my liquid line right here. Now coming into the metering device, we're supposed to have 100% liquid, 100% liquid. Coming out of the metering device is going to be approximately 75, 25. 75% liquid, 25% vapor out of the, coming out of the metering device. As it goes into the evaporator, that 7525 is going to change. It's going to go from 75 to let's say 7030, 6040, 5050, 1090, and then eventually, right here, is what I like to call my predetermined point. All of the refrigerant will have to have evaporated right there. All of it. When we take a temperature reading here, we're going to get a temperature higher than this evaporator. Typically, in an air conditioning system, what do we want the evaporator to be? What temperature do we want it in, in the refrigeration system? We want it to be approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if this is R22, typically we want 40. If this is so, uh, let's say 47C, 40 degrees. If it's 44A, if it's our, you know, 410A, whichever, we still want that to be 40 degrees if it is an air conditioning system. If it is a refrigerator, of course, it's going to be lower. And if it is in a freezer, it's going to be much, much lower. It's going to be down to zero or below zero degrees. Okay, but let's take a look at this right here. If this is 40 degrees, we know that if we're using, let's say, R22, then the pressure should be 68.5. 68 PSIG right there. If this happens to be, let's say, 410A, then this is going to be 118 PSIG. So the pressures are different, but the temperature is going to stay the same. Okay, the point is that when we take the temperature here, this should read 50 degrees. So when we look at the 50 and we go ahead and subtract the 40 from that, we end up with 10 degrees of what we call superheat. 10 degrees of superheat. <clears throat> that means that from this point, from a predetermined point to where I'm taking the temperature reading, I am picking up 10 degrees of superheat. If the metering device, let's say that this T metering device happens to be a TXV and it's not adjusted properly, there's an adjustment at the bottom of the TXV. If it's not adjusted properly, this predetermined point will move down to here. Well, guess what? If it's really out of adjustment, it may move to here, it may move to here, it may move to here until eventually 
we have liquid coming back to my compressor. When you have liquid coming back to the compressor, what is that called? That is called flood back. Flood back. Flood back. Now, what happens is this mixes in with the oil. The oil foams up. If you happen to have a side glass, that side glass is going to turn white. Once that side glass turns white, that means that the oil is foaming and that oil is going to be sucked up and it's going to be going into my cylinder right here. Now this piston is going up and down very fast. How fast is it going? Well, the motor will rotate somewhere between 3400 to 1700 RPM very, very fast. So that means that piston is moving very, very fast. Liquid gets in there. Liquid under these circumstances cannot be compressed. That piston comes up, something is going to break. Either the piston is going to go in there sideways, because I have seen that. The piston goes in there sideways, or maybe the connecting rod here breaks. Sometimes the valves, suction discharge valves, break because of the liquid. Now, once that happens, then there's nothing we can do. We have to change the compressor. We put a new compressor in. What happens when we put the new compressor in and we don't adjust or replace the metering device? That means that the same problem is going to happen again. Same problem. We're going to lose this compressor. If we were to replace the TXV, if we were to replace the, the metering device here, and put one that's not broken, put one that's working properly, then we're going to see that we have the proper superheat. If you have superheat, you're not going to get liquid coming back to the compressor. It's impossible for you, get, for you to get liquid coming back to the compressor if you have superheat. So it's very important for you to check that. We said flood back is when liquid comes back to the compressor. Then you have what they call slugging. Slugging is when liquid gets up here. You get a slug of liquid up on top of the piston. First you get flood back, then you get slugging. That piston comes up. It cannot compress that slug of liquid in there, and it's going to destroy the compressor. What kind of liquid? Well, it can either be refrigerant, liquid refrigerant, or it could be oil that's up here. Because remember, the, li the liquid refrigerant came here, foamed up the oil. That oil got sucked up in here. Most likely, the side glass went black. You don't see any uh, oil level because it's all up here. That piston comes up, breaks the piston. What's the problem? We're getting liquid back to the compressor. How do we stop that? By having superheat. By having superheat. Also, Sometimes what happens is, and you have to be very quick when you do this, what happens is you, you turn the compressor on. When you turn the compressor on, the side glass will go white real quick, and then it'll go black, or you won't see a level in there. But that's on startup. That's only on startup. What, that tell, what that's telling me is that you have what they call a flooded start. So you have a flooded start. That means that your crankcase heater is bad. The purpose of the crankcase heater is to make sure that you don't have liquid refrigerant mixed in with the oil on startup. So now check your crankcase heater. What's the easiest way to check a crankcase heater? While the compressor is satisfied, while the compressor is not running, because the thermostat is satisfied, you can touch this and see if it's hot. But don't grab it just touch it with the back of your hand because this is supposed to be hot. So be very, very careful. You could always check amperage, but I don't know what the amperage would be. The amperage would depend on the wattage that that's pulling. So the easiest way to do it is to check to see if it's hot while the system is satisfied, meaning the compressor is not running, meaning that the thermostat has the compressor off. So again, real quick, why do we lose compressors a lot of times? Because we don't have superheat. How do we get superheat? How do we get our superheat reading? 
getting the suction pressure, converting it to temperature, getting the actual temperature of the refrigerant, leaving the coil, subtracting the two, and taking your superheat reading. Now, if the metering device is, the TXV is bad, then yes, you're gonna get refrigerant coming back. If this metering device happens to be a capillary tube, then you can't adjust it. That means, and you, and you don't have superheat, then, and you're getting liquid back to the compressor, that means the system is overcharged. The system is overcharged. So it depends on the type of metering device as to what it is that you're going to do. Now, I'm trying to explain to you why you may lose some compressors. You're gonna be looking to see if you're getting flood back, slugging, or you may even have a flooded start. Flood back happens first, liquid coming back to the compressor, you'll see the oil foaming. Slugging, when it gets up on top of the cylinder, on top of the piston in the cylinder, and that piston comes up, it cannot compress liquid, it will rattle, it will make noises, and eventually break the compressor. And you have a flooded start. A flooded start is when your crankcase heater is bad. On startup, as the pressure drops, all of that refrigerant turns into, the liquid refrigerant mixed in with the oil turns into vapor, boils out of there, and it pumps the oil out. I hope this helped. This is Julio, Aircon Academy. Please uh, follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, and again, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, please send them to me, and I'll see what I can do about making a video for you. Thank you.